Why to do, everybody? been here for a while, but I have been detained at the pleasure of the state of Louisiana, <laughs> who found it necessary for me to take a cooling off period in one of their, um, facilities. <laughs> anyway, I have returned, and on a very fortuitous evening, for apparently the Scottish Conan guy is too embarrassed to come out tonight because... <laughs> Well, you never heard that before. <laughs> he's too embarrassed to come out tonight because he's got a little zit on his neck. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Look at me. I'm covered in <laughs> scales. <laughs> anyway, he, he's got a little zit on his neck, and he's like, oh, I got a zit. I don't want to go out. <laughs> Can't we do the whole show with the puppet? Chicken monkeys. <laughs> and I was like, no, man, you can't do the whole show with the puppets. No one would believe that. <laughs> and the delightful news is that the studio audience tonight is so warm. <laughs> yeah, for now, anyways. So uh, I'm here. Now, I'm excited tonight because of two reasons. One, uh, uh, I, one of the guests is Maria Bello, and she's a very attractive lady. And, and two, uh, when I say two, I mean B and B <laughs> and B. The second guest tonight is a gentleman by the name of Dan Riskin, and Dan likes to study... What the hell? <laughs> like one clap? <laughs> It was like a, like a small passing of gas on a plastic chair. <laughs> now, here's what I think. Like, Dan likes to study, you know, infestations of scary critters. And I'm like, boy, I got something for you. <laughs> he likes to, he, he studies it when there's a lot of scary animals all packed together. And I was like, well, there's only me. And I'm like, yeah, but one of me makes like a lot of scary animals packed together. <laughs> also, I haven't been here since the skeleton has been here. And I'm very excited because that looks like something I could gnaw on for a while. <laughs> Y'all right there, Boney? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll be right back, everybody. The Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson. Sponsored by Denny's. America's Diner is always open. full of it because just before I came out I had the warm-up guy going now make a lot of noise when he comes out make yourself proud make your country proud and I'm like man he's panicking 
He's trying to get that. Is this like talking like soldiers about to go into combat? <laughs> Make your country proud. This guy, he really sucks. He really needs your help. <laughs> Make your country proud? <laughs> well, I tell you, make your country proud because it is indeed a great day for America, everybody. Yeah. Isn't it? it is. It's a great day. A great day for most Americans, but not a great day if you're an American mobster. Because uh, this morning the FBI opened up a giant can of whoopass on the Mafia. The feds, they did. A giant can of whoopass. I don't talk like that. Why did I say that? Ah, a giant can of whoopass on the Mafia. Now, the feds are arrested 127 mobsters in New York, New Jersey, and Rhode Island. And the shocking part, of all of those men, four of them were not named Vinny. <laughs> And <laughs> make your country proud. <laughs> the FBI have busted members of every major New York crime family. The cops say they haven't seen that many Italian American men in handcuffs since the night they raided Madonna's bedroom. Ah <laughs> no, wait, that doesn't make sense either. Why would the NYPD raid Madonna's bedroom? <laughs> right, guys, we're going into Madonna's bedroom. Again? Yes! <laughs> We're ridden for illegal use of a British accent. I don't know, anyway. But the newspapers in New York are going crazy. You get a picture of that, the, there, yeah, there's the Star Ledger, and the FBI arrest does the monsters, witnesses, nobody saw nothing right there. <laughs> oh, look up in the corner, though. Gabagool on sale, there you are, coupon inside. <laughs> I like how the FBI agents wear the windbreakers that say FBI while they're busting those guys. Yeah, it's, it's, a very, it's a badass uniform. It's better than the mob uniform because the mob uniform used to be cool. You know, the fedora, the pinstripe suit, the kind of, hey, why is the guy like that? <laughs> now they've just got a velour tracksuit with Juicy written on the end. <laughs> That is a mob thing, right? <laughs> I bet that guy wasn't even in the mob when I think about it now. <laughs> Call me Vinny. <laughs> a lot of people romanticize the Mafia, though. You know, shows like The Sopranos humanize them. Ah, oh, Tony Soprano, he's not bad. Just a regular dad who occasionally chops people up. Come on! <laughs> who amongst us? <laughs> <laughs> oh, a lot of Mafia people in the audience. The guys busted today weren't Tony Soprano, though. They, were, they weren't adorable tubby neurotics. Among the things they're charged with is stealing the Christmas bonuses of construction workers and shaking down strip clubs. They were messing with construction workers and strippers, and these are my people! <laughs> uh, strippers dressed like construction workers? That is the... <laughs> Yeah, the Mafia busts like this are very harmful to the reputation of uh, Italian-Americans. They do almost as much damage as the Jersey Shore. That's why... <laughs> that's why we must avoid, uh, avoid, you know, stereotyping here. Saying that all Italian people are in the Mafia is ridiculous. It's like saying all Irish people are drunk, which is not true. <laughs> Some of them are just hung over. They're not drunk. They're not drunk yet. I look forward to your letters. Your booze-smelling letters. Do you know, I've had just about enough of this. I nearly owe. It's true, though. That, well, I tell you what is true. The prosecutors say that the highest-level uh, mobster arrested today... This is true, right? The guy arrested was called Luigi the Old Man Minocchio. <laughs> Oh, you want to laugh at the old man, eh? I think they call him the old man because he'd make you an offer he couldn't remember. <laughs> you come to me on this the day of my... <laughs> what day is it? The guy Luigi, Luigi uh, Minocchio is always known... He's also known by the name Baby Shanks. <laughs> That's true, because he has short legs like a baby. I'm not making that up, his name's Baby Shanks. You know you've got the mob on the ropes when the guy in charge is known for having legs like a baby. <laughs> when that's the criteria for running the Mafia, who will lead us in our crime syndicate? Uh, Tony the Chainsaw or the guy with legs like a baby? Ah, <laughs> uh, let me do it, let me do it! Out here in Hollywood, of course, we have the Mafia, we have the Gay Mafia, right here. If you cross the regular Mafia, they whack you. You cross the Gay Mafia, well, they'll whack you as well, actually, but... <laughs> but they'll buy you dinner first. Uh, now, the Gay... 
Gay Mafia and the regular Mario Mafia are very different. One's a bunch of well-dressed guys who wear perfume and kiss each other on the cheeks. <laughs> and the other one's the Gay Mafia. Uh, you got your Italian Mafia, the Chinese Mafia, the Russian Mafia, and the one that's infiltrated Hollywood the most recently is the Armenian Mafia. Uh, the Kardashians, they're called. <laughs> Big, tough, burly. What's the name of that big dude in the Kardashians, that big guy? Chloe. Yeah. Well, no, yeah, you bet. There's somebody that doesn't have legs like a baby. I'll lead your climb, Syndicate. My disguise will be wearing a dress. I'm kidding, I love them. <laughs> I don't like them all, but I like the, the movie The Godfather, especially Marlon Brando's character. He made people kiss his ring. That's how powerful he was. He made you kiss his jewellery. I'd go even further. I'd, I'd force people to make out with my tiara. <laughs> Fondle my jewels. <laughs> Bulls. No, they, they see, it was a double entendre there, and now you've just made it a thing. Oh, dear. <laughs> I like you. I like you too. Bulls. So you don't like me? Well, why did you say you liked me then? You just been a bastard? Room, room. Too rough. Yeah, yeah, too rough. Anyway, it's commercial break time now, thank A God. commercial would fit in nicely. <laughs> That's just what I said. Bulls. Is it me or is it really awkward tonight? Hey, we should televise this. Why, no one would believe it, Jeff. We're going to take a break, but when we come back... Bulls. Bulls. show we've ever made in the history of the show. Oh. <laughs> Do we have a graphic for my zit yet? Do we have it? <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> That's it! Thanks, everybody. <laughs> My first guest tonight is a very beautiful actress. Uh, she's in uh, The Company Men, which is in theatres now. Please welcome the adorable Maria Bello, everybody. Maria Bello. You brought something to sit on. Uh, That's yeah. nice. I, I I got pluked by a marsupial. Did you? I. <laughs> what's, well, go, did, uh, can I've I? I always ask wanted to say is, that. Actually. Is, is, uh, uh, you know, I was actually uh, snowboarding on the first of the year. I went to Haiti the week before. Everybody was terrified that I was going. Oh, something terrible could happen. The first of the year, I go snowboarding with Jack, and I fall down snowboarding and I break my coccyx bone. So I have to be That's a, a hell of an elaborate story for hemorrhoids, isn't it? <laughs> just admit it, just say, I've got the old, uh, you know, is it really, uh, you've got a, a broken coccyx? you got a broken coccyx. Uh, does that, is that nice? I was is, uh, <laughs> do you, snowboarding, so you, snowboarding. see, that's why I never did snowboarding. Well, I like to ski, and no, because you always land on your ass. You see, all the snowboarders like, I'm cool, I'm cool, boom, on their ass they, every time. They should tell you to wear a butt pad. They didn't tell me to wear a butt pad. Would you wear a butt pad? I would wear a butt pad. Really? Yeah. Even if you weren't snowboarding? Like J-Lo butt <laughs> No, you've got a nice butt. I've, I've seen, I've not seen it, but I... I've noticed it. I've noticed that you've been a guest on the show before, and when you left, I noticed you leaving. <laughs> 
thank you. That's Is that very a compliment? Nice. Oh, is it sore? I gotta change positions. Yeah. A little oh. bit. That's bad. Oh. But it's okay. Really? It's not okay. It's not as bad. You've got a broken... It takes like six months to heal, I've heard. D is there any treatment for it? So they can put a cast on it or no. near it? <laughs> a butt cast. Well, what is it? Your coccyx is... It your... Jeff, you're a skeleton. Your coccyx is... Uh... <laughs> It's down near the... Uh... It's that little tail at the very end of your spine. And right. it, if it breaks Here we off... we used to have tails if we had descended from apes, which of course we didn't. Of course we didn't. Right. No, it was Adam and Eve. Well, hey, hey, whatever it was, whatever I don't want to... I ain't Big part bang. of that fight. That's for sure. Well, that's good. What are we doing in Haiti? Relief I, work. I, I work in Haiti, you know, we've talked about it for the last few years oh, right, with yeah. Artists for Beast and Justice and since the earthquake a few days later we were there and um, built a women's clinic and our organization is called We Advance and it's against gender-based violence against women. Oh, right. So oh, we're right. there quite a bit. Yeah. Very happy. Good. Yeah. And then you were... Uh... So you were snowboarding with, with Jack, Jack, who of course is your son, is the same age as my son, right? He's, well, is Jack 10 now? He's going to be 10 in March. All right, okay. But they're at the age, is, is he at the age where he's going like, yeah, no, I don't really care. What? Yeah. What I, do you want? I used to be the funniest, nicest guy. Yep. Was, uh, now I'm just a douche. <laughs> <laughs> me it's too. like everything he's saying. He's saying to me, you, you're not funny to me. Why do you always say that? Don't hold my hand. Totally. Yeah. I used to hear I was the nicest mom, the hottest mom. Now I hear like, what kind of mom are you? You're not a mom. You're a therapist. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's the new one I hear. You're it's, a therapist? Yeah, it's such a California kid. Yeah, no, they know what a therapist yeah. is. Has he seen a therapist? Never! Yet? Yeah. And I say, how do you know what that is? He's like, everyone goes to one. <laughs> do, do you see a therapist? No, I don't. Really? Not I, anymore. No, I do. Do you? Yes, Still? yes. I go see a therapist all the time. For, how, for how many years? Uh, about two, two, uh, 19. <laughs> I was done after 22. 22 done. years? You were in therapy yeah. for 22 yeah, yeah. years? Yeah. And you're better? Do I seem like it? Yeah, you actually, you seem fine apart from your arse. Uh, you, you, which also seems fine, but looks like it might be damaged. Really? It looks well, like that? No, well, let me have a look. No, Does fine. it look like it's damaged? Yeah, no, it's fine. Okay. Ooh, Thank it, you. Oh, At least yeah. it looks good. No, it, it does. It, look, it looks good. And uh, how long before you... Are you on any painkillers, maybe? No. I was on them for a couple of days, but I found myself really loopy. Really loopier. Yeah. I found myself really, yeah. found myself really loopy. Way, I couldn't does do it. Does it get in the way of acting? Do you only take sitting down parts or somebody... Would... <laughs> Standing up parts. It's harder to sit it's down. It's harder to sit down? Yeah. Your oh. coccyx holds you up. Oh, tell to me. To sit. <laughs> Men and women, though. I seem to remember, I, I was in uh, the Rocky Horror once and I had to wear high heels and it was, uh, I, it was difficult, um, yeah. but wonderful, but difficult. <laughs> I'd love to see a picture of that. A picture of me in high heels? Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. But, the, <laughs> but I seem to remember that women have different coccyxes from men. Do they? And, yeah, I think a woman's coccyx swivels a bit. It's uh, in the back it's and the men's is in the front. No, you, no that's no. not a... <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> I might be mistaken, I don't know. What? A woman's, I don't know enough about ladies and men's business oh. to know even what you're talking about. The, but that's okay. Okay. Uh, anyway, so that's fine. You're going to be fine and everything's great and you'll never go snowboarding again. Ever? Really? You yeah, don't? you're 40, right? 48. What? You're no, old, you your God. Don't even start. My coccyx has fallen out. <laughs> Okay, I say no snowboarding for the first time after 40. Really? Yeah, that's my new rule. I didn't start snowboarding until I was 40. So you snowboard? A little bit. I snowboarded a little bit. And then I good? didn't like it because I kept falling my backside. And then, actually, uh, about the third or fourth day, I was like, you know, I, I like a slap in the ass as much as any slightly fruity <laughs> man. But I, I'm like, I can't. It was making me like, oh, I didn't even want to stand up after a while. No, it's Every fun. time. I, so I, I took up skiing, and that's fine. I just landed my head now. <laughs> Into a tree. Wear a helmet, though. Wear a helmet. Always. Yeah, you can wear a helmet on your arse. Yes. Two helmets. <laughs> yeah, but little, little helmets. It'll be all right. It depends so, uh, what kind so of guy you are. you are. still living down uh, near the beach? I am. I'm no. living in Venice. All right. Oh, I love actually, it. yeah. And I'm sort of grounded because I can't fly for six weeks, which is, weeks, which is good for me. You can't? Because I tend to... Go away. All the time. Well, what about you? You mean you can't sit on an airplane? Maybe you could stand up. No, I could stand up the whole flight. But you know how those flight attendants are? They're like, sit down, turn off your thing. I, I mean, turn off the, your thing. The, 
Turn and the women are worse, electric. actually. They are with that fit down. Yeah. Honestly, I found more and more that flight attendants, they must be miserable. They're well, not happy. No, to be fair, I think it's a very difficult job because by the time people have gone Don't through the... Don't make excuses. No, 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 I think it's fair. You know, the people that go on the plane, by the time you get on the plane, you've, you, you know, you've been anally probed by every, <laughs> by every guy who's failed the cop exam. You've gone through all of that kind of, eh, you're a terrorist. You're like, I just want to get to Denver. They're like, oh, really? And then you get... You get through all of that and the airports are busy and noisy and by the time you get on the plane you're in a terrible mood and then they're there and they've had to go through all that. So they're in a terrible mood Yes, well. I think that's maybe it. Yes. Also, I do like the idea though of uh, flight attendants when they used to wear the tight little outfits. The ladies too, I'm not sexist. <laughs> Just the little... <laughs> You should look. take up flying, you know. That's a thing that you might enjoy. You do that. I do do that, yeah. You're like yeah, a pilot. You're a full-on pilot. I'm a full-on pilot, yeah. Do you fly the helicopter out of here? I, I can't fly a helicopter. helicopter landing. I can't fly a helicopter. Loser. That's a completely different thing. You have to be a bit mad to fly helicopters. Why? Helicopters, Why? like, pilots are like musicians, but helicopter pilots are like drummers. They're, <laughs> they're a little bit kind of, <laughs> this doesn't even have wings. They're, they're kind of crazy. They are. You, you talk to anyone who flies helicopters, a little bit, there's a little bit kind of weird going on there. Because a plane should have wings, not just a big fan in the top of the... Crikey. That, it? it should have that. I want to fly a helicopter. You want to fly a helicopter? convinced me. Okay. Well, I do know a guy at Van Nuys Airport that would teach you. Really? Yeah, yeah, he would teach you to fly a helicopter. But you have to sit down. I don't know if you'd like it. I you can bring my down. donut. Yeah, you sit down in that donut and then there's a lot of vibration. <laughs> Actually, when I think about it, maybe I would like to fly a helicopter. <laughs> we have to take a break. Will you stick around? Yes. Yeah, uh, for the entire show and maybe for the rest of the week. Perhaps. Yeah, all right. Well, we'll be right back with Maria Bell. We don't normally talk, uh, but we're talking tonight, apparently, for some reason. Great. What? No, I have to do emails. Let's do it. I have to, apparently, I didn't do any emails in this show already. <laughs> so I have to do some emails. What time is it, Jeffrey Pearson? Santa, any tweets in your sack? <laughs> what? It's a, it's a fiendishly clever play on words. What it means is, uh, Santa Claus, do you have any, you know, emails and tweets in your sack? What he's really implying that he wants to talk about Santa Claus's scrotum. Bulls. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mom, Bulls. if you will, yeah. But uh, anyway, do it. An email jingle. Uh, jingle dang. Uh, right, there you are. All right, here's some emails. You ready? This is from Hannah in Albertville in Alabama. You ever, you ever been to uh, Never Alabama? Never been to Alabama. No, Alabama's you? nice. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's, it's lovely. They've got the... Uh, what, the um, the uh, Birmingham down there, they've got this... Uh, Birmingham. Um, and they have a football team, Crimson Tide, what are they called? Yeah. Uh, the Crimson Tide. Yeah. But it's not Birmingham there, right? They're out somewhere else. Anyway, they're in Alabama, Crimson Tide, which was kind of embarrassing for me because when I went to school, girls, when they were having their period, would say, it's the Crimson Tide. But they... <laughs> and that's the name of their and football team? And that's the name team? of the football team, yeah, so... <laughs> CBS cares. Uh, <laughs> so what, what did they say? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Hannah and Albert Rose. He says, "Dear Craig and Maria, look at that. They did, it, ah, yeah, I, I made that. Us. They didn't really say that. <laughs> My husband and I stay up late after our children go to sleep to spend time with each other, but he is always watching your show instead of paying attention to me. Do you have any idea how to solve this issue?" <laughs> What do you think? I think she should direct his attention towards her coccyx. <laughs> I agree. That, get, how would you uh, get a man's attention if you felt that you weren't being given... Right now? I can't... Yeah, I'd, okay, I'd, yeah, I'd, okay, I'd, right now. I'd get rid of the donut. <laughs> that would get a man's attention don't, for sure. Don't be hasty. I am European. <laughs> we can incorporate the donut. I don't... <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, I know. Uh, this is from Vanessa in Brooklyn in New York. Um, you ever been to New York? Uh, quite, I lived there. Same, you're <laughs> yeah, right. All right, she says, uh, hi Craig and Maria. That's amazing she knew you were here. <laughs> Can you suggest a good place to meet a blind date? Thanks. Oh, now there you are. Where would you meet a blind date? Interesting. Would you ever go on one? I'm f n uh, never. 
I've never been on a blind date. You're I don't lying. Think I can tell you've got some no. weird lying thing going on. No, never. I, I, I definitely have to meet someone and feel like a connection and then want to see them. What's the point of a blind date? Well, to see if you feel that connection and then you can see them again. Like if, if for example, I said, you know, I know this dude that you should really meet. He'd be perfect for you. You'd be like, no, I don't want to meet him. Yeah, I'd say that. Really? Yeah. Oh, I was going to just tell I, you about I, this dude. I would right? make a plan. I'd make a plan. I'd say, okay, we're going to be at this restaurant. Bring him to the restaurant. He'll be across the, across the room. Introduce us, and we'll see if we have a connection. But don't tell him. I see Get you're it? A, a control freak. You, uh, <laughs> that is true. And you will make a very good pilot. I, uh, <laughs> would you ever meet anyone that you met on the Internet? Never. Okay. That scares no, me. No, I know. Especially because you'd meet them, then they'd be all like, kind of, put the lotion in the basket. <laughs> Have you ever met anyone on the internet? I don't think so. I try to think. I think, but no, I don't think I've met anyone uh, on the internet. But it works for people. There's a lot Apparently, of dating yeah, going on. Well, it's very modern. You know, people do it now. It's just part of life now. Social yeah. networking. It's, it's just part of it. Yeah. I wouldn't do it, though. Me neither. No. <laughs> Scared. I like to see the goods in a restaurant before I, you know. <laughs> Caleb in San Antonio says, uh, Dear Craig, when going to the doctor's office, and Maria, he said that too. Uh, when going to the doctor's office, why does the doctor leave the room when you change if they are going to see you naked anyway? That is a good question. I know the answer to it. But Do let's, tell. No, no. Well, no, no, I think I it's because yours. there are certain, when the doctor says, I am going to focus on now this area of yours medically, then that's all right. There's no kind of charge to it. But if the doctor's just going, oh, like that, <laughs> it's completely different energy. You think so? It's how my mind works. What do you think? <laughs> I don't know. I was at a doctor yesterday. They did the same thing. But I tend to do a thing before they leave the room. I start changing just because I want to see the reaction. Oh. How and, do they um, react? They say, um, I'll wait outside. Thank you. And they go out. Now, you must have been through quite a lot of that with your coccyx, actually. I have been yeah. with my coccyx. And that, that's a real... Cute doctor looking at your... Really? Now, there's yeah. a thing. What about if you found a doctor attractive and yet he's looking at an area of your body you normally wait to the, the, after the restaurant? It's... <laughs> It's happened before. Yeah. It's happened before. When I was 18 years old, I had a Phillies game in Philly. They had to rush me to the doctor. Something was wrong with my insides. This doctor's checking me in the emergency room, and I start screaming, Stop! You're too cute! You're too cute! Get away from me! <laughs> because he had to look at my nether regions. Your nether regions? I was 18. Regions. Yeah. What would you call that? Oh. Politely on CBS. Not a nether region. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, and a lady, Jeff. Oh, a lady. Ooh. Sake. No, no. He, said, he says bulls a lot. He does, yeah. Yeah, he does. Bulls. Yeah, there you go. He just did it again. We're out of time, actually. Well. Maria. Great. <laughs> It's been lovely sitting here reading emails with you. Yeah, you know, it's nice to catch up. Playing, I've seen you Playing with bulls. Bulls. <laughs> Do you want a mouth organ, awkward pause, anything like that? Uh, no, I think we're good. Okay. <laughs> So we're done then. Hydro <laughs> hydromorphone. What? what? Hydromorphone. The morphine pills. Oh, jeez. Do you have any? What? No, that's these are kangaroo testicles. That's not morphine. Oh, are you? Darn it. I think this is, are you I on? Are thing. you on morphine right no, now? No, but after this, I need it. No. I, <laughs> I, w I hope this kangaroo had morphine before they did this. <laughs> I know, poor guy. I know. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay. <laughs> We're done. Uh, we'll be right back, everybody. Maria Bello, everybody. We'll be right back. is a biologist is here to talk about the animal planet's new series infested take a look at that <laughs> <laughs> oh man that's <laughs> just like cbs isn't it <laughs> please welcome dan riskin everybody dan riskin Bye. 
Thank you. Every time you're, you're here, you're always talking about scary, creepy, crawly creatures. You don't get something cute like a koala bear or something. It's always rats. And, and Although being infested by koala bears would be adorable, wouldn't it? Right? I was thinking about that yeah. when you were koala bearing. Yeah, no, I like the koala bears. Uh, it's, it's all context, right? I mean, are, are, if you're outside in the woods and you see a rat doing its thing, that's different from having a rat run across your front yes, of the kitchen. Yes, you're right. It's all context. Well, do you... Uh, do you but what, what, rats aren't out in the woods, though. They're in well, the they kitchen. Are. I mean, they're, they're everywhere. I mean, so when we've tra transformed, you know, the nature into cities, we've made it better for us. You know, we've heated things, we've put food and garbage all in localized places, so we're set here, and it turns out that some wild animals do even better in that environment than they do in the natural environment. Oh, so right. that rats be, would be well, one of them, then. That uh, would be one of them. And yeah. then you get these infestations, like this show inf Infested focuses on. But that, I, I, I don't wish to judge the lady in the, in the clip, but her, Good. The, her kitchen floor was very dirty. Well... <laughs> It looked like dust. That was actually a rat. So, it's, yeah, no, it's the the thing is the way the show is put together. You can completely sympathize with these people. She moves to a house with her kids, and you know she's starting out in a new place, and she's excited about it. And then she sees one rat. Well, if you see one, there's no such thing as one that exactly. rat. Exactly. Right? Yeah, or yeah, one that, cockroach, or well, one snake, or one. I mean, it goes on. One snake. Oh yeah. <laughs> really? Oh yeah, yeah. This snakes brilliant. are. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, no, but really the. <laughs> <laughs> there are. I didn't know snakes caused well, infection. Well, not usually, but. Um, I thought that was just an Indiana Jones when he falls in and all the snakes are like that. Yeah, I have a friend who's a snake expert and he watched that and he's like, that is totally fake. Those snakes would never exist in Egypt. Those, that's a snake from North America. Why would there be a rattlesnake in Egypt? He got really mad about that. Yeah, babe. But anyway, yeah. these people. Man, you hang with a really fast crowd, <laughs> don't you? Well, I do. But yeah, there's a, there's a family and they moved to a house in Idaho. Right. And. You know, the kids are playing in the yard, and, oh, there's a snake. And so, you know, it's just a garter snake, so they get it out of the way. And then this happens more and more. And one day, this guy finds 42 snakes in the lawn in front of his house. 42! What, what are they attracted to, then? Uh, what's going other, on? Other snakes, I would imagine. Well, so snakes do a thing in the winter. They, they get together in these dens, and then they spend the winter there. And it turns out that this house was built on top of a snake den. You moved the headstones, but you didn't move the bodies! Yeah! <laughs> Exactly. Oh my lord! Yeah, yeah. That's horrible, yeah. like snake poltergeist. Yeah, but so you can imagine, you you know, you like you get this house, you buy it, you move in, you're all excited, you've got yes, mortgage yeah. payments. It's just then... like the lady with the rats. It's like the same thing. It's the same thing. thing. So what you're saying is, don't move into a new house. <laughs> don't ever. That's the way yeah. to avoid. Well, th that's the thing, right? We think that we'll get this house and then we'll be we'll be safe, right? We'll keep the animals from on nature. the outside from nature, right? right? That's why we have houses to get away from nature. Yeah, I mean that's the basic idea. Is you don't want to sleep in the yard because something will come lay eggs on you or something. Right, like that, right, right. right. Yeah. I mean, that's that's well, why I live in a house. <laughs> I don't know about you. You live in Canada, though, don't you? No, I live in Providence now. Oh, yeah. right. Okay. You, yeah. you moved and you live in Edmonton? I'm from Edmonton. Good oh. memory, man. No, no, Good I remember. Word. Well, yeah. listen, not everybody that comes here is talking about rats and cockroaches and everything. That's right. So that's you right. tend to remember the ones that do. Yeah. 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 So listen, why do we like uh, some animals like koala bears and kangaroos and cuddly animals? And yet, like, what's the difference between that and a, and a rat? That's right? a great question. Thanks. I, I you know, like raccoons. Right. Raccoons are cute. Adorable. You see them in the woods and they do this funny thing, like raccoons really do this. They, they wash their food. They'll, if they have food, they'll take it to a stream and they'll roll it around and they'll eat it all cute. Oh, well, that's and that's adorable. great. Yeah, but adorable. when you have like noises coming from your attic and you go up there with a flashlight and there are like 40 of them up there and they're, they're, their poo is staining the walls and there's a fungus growing in their poo that like they, it gets in your wife's lungs and then she has to what? go to the hospital. Yeah. It's context. Your so, wife's lung? <laughs> yes. Yeah, and yeah. she's probably just moved into the house and she's is excited there, to yeah. be there. Yeah. Yeah, not now. <laughs> right. she's no, in the no, she's mad. She's like, I have to go. But it's context, right? So it's right. still a raccoon. So right. it's all, it, you know, we, we have this idea that nature's outside and we like it there. And then when it's inside, we don't like it as much. And, you know, fair enough. Is there anything that creeps you out? Yeah, yeah. There, there's a segment about scorpions. Mm -hmm. And, like, this house gets overrun with scorpions. And I... I don't want a lot of scorpions. And oh, there's another one about bed bugs. You don't like bed bugs. You bed bugs. Uh, no, freak bed you. bugs are my favorite. They're adorable. What do you mean? You should point me like you don't like bed bugs. Like you're no, weird. you're the guy yeah, yeah. that does like. We all love bed bugs, and you don't yeah, like yeah. them. What's wrong with yeah, you? Yeah, communist. No, I don't, I don't like bed bugs any more than anyone else. Why no, would I like no, them? No, no, no. All right, I love them. Oh, you do? No, no, I don't. I don't. I, I've never seen one. Oh, haven't you? No. Well, I'll just yeah. I'll, I 
I probably don't have them on me. It's right. probably fine, I'm sure. <laughs> well, there's not a big infestation in New York recently. Oh, yeah, all over the place. They're up, you know, five-fold in some cities and all this stuff. Well, why? Why are they... That's a good question. Th that's Again. two, two. <laughs> two, two. Two good questions. The some people think it's because we, we used to spray with an insecticide called DDT. Yes, I've heard of And that yeah. got the numbers down, but it also started killing peregrine falcons, and we like peregrine falcons. They're adorable. So we decided not to use that anymore, and some people think the bed bugs are back because of that, but other people think that it's just a new sort of wave of them that came from northern Africa that happened to be really resilient and tough, and so we don't know exactly why the numbers are up. And what would they travel in? A bed? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Flying carpets. Obviously. So, yeah, no, I, I mean, you, you go to a hotel, you put your suitcase down, right. you sleep in the bed, you right. wake up, you have a funny thing on your neck, <laughs> yeah, and then... Who could that be? Could that be from the... I'm not a doctor. Is that know. bed? I don't know. Is that bed bugs? If I, if I cut that open, will spiders come out? <laughs> Maybe. That would be awesome. Oh, yeah, 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 no, I would yeah. do that. You should definitely film no, that. No, no, I would like that. Hmm. What about sharks? They creep you out? <laughs> I, I, respect, I respect sharks. Really? Yeah, I, I'm, I don't worry about them as much because you're less likely to have a shark infestation in your house. <laughs> but... What if you moved into a new house and you thought it was on land, but it was there? <laughs> Yeah, or the, yeah, the tides could change. What's the, mo what's the most dangerous animal you've been, been around then? Oof, uh, that's a tough question. No, I, well, see, there's two good ones and then a tough one. Yeah, the yeah. tough one. I, I, I went swimming with sharks once, and that was really see, that, cool. I, and you've been swimming yeah, yeah, with sharks yeah, too, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, my, this, my sharks were only about six feet long. Oh, mine were about 150 feet long. <laughs> Yeah, I saw a picture of you yeah, with your yeah, sharks, and yeah, they, no. they were... They no, were, they're pretty big. Those were serious sharks. Yeah, they were, you were wearing chain mail and all that? Yeah, I was, you didn't have the chain mail on? No, I... Dude, I, you're bad. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I figured, you know, they'll bite my arm off. It's not like it'll kill me. i just lose an arm. And then if you lost an arm to a shark, I mean, that's... You get street cred, right? As a biologist. Now you get street cred with a nice hat. <laughs> you know, uh, I've been going about this all wrong. Yeah, no, you don't... But, I mean, you're practically a biologist. You've got... You swim with sharks. You have testicles on your desk. I mean, you're... You got a oh, snake yeah, mode? Yeah. Again. Yeah. No, are these kangaroo testicles? You know about them. Well, I, uh... Somebody said they might be wallaby testicles. Did I, I drew that smiley you face did. on they it. You did. come no, like no, that? Because no, no. I was going to say, I've never seen that on a kangaroo's no, testicles they, before. They're very unusual markings, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, that, that is very strange. Yeah, no, they, um... The, uh, is it kangaroo or...? Well, I, I have no idea, but I can tell you, kangaroos, um, they, they, when they mate, there's a lot of competition among males for the females, and the female will mate with several males. And so if you're a male and you want the babies, the joeys, to be yours, the strategy is to produce tons of sperm. So there's so so kangaroos tend to have, you know, fairly large balls when they when they do this kind of a uh, strategy for mating. It's called sperm competition. It's all over the place when you look No, for you it. it just got weird, man. <laughs> It just got weird. I'm sorry. We were doing rats and scorpions and stuff, and now it's kang kangaroo sperm. Yeah. I nearly said something that... Uh, would be, uh, yeah. But that's the game for all these. I mean, they're all trying to reproduce, and, and so, you know, you're, uh, an animal is born into the environment, and then it makes do with what it has, right? And so if you're a scorpion living in the desert, it's tough, right? There's sun, there's not a lot of water. Scorpions are resilient. They can survive for a long period of time without water. But then if you're born and there's a house... It's like, wow, go, go to the house. it's That's really great yeah, here, yeah. and I can have tons of babies, and there's no problem, and so then you get an infestation. So we build, the, we, we change the environment to work for us, and sometimes and it, it works, works for animals. animals. So yeah. what you're saying is that we should probably knock down our houses. Yes, <laughs> but that'll work for other animals, so you, you never know. You mm. never know. I mean, people have been around for a long time, and there have always been animals taking advantage of us. <laughs> we're done. All right. Yeah, we're done. That's it. All right. Oh, awkward pause? Harmonica? Um, no, I... I yeah, harmonica, please. <laughs> okay. Do you play? No, I don't. Okay. But I listen. No, you go ahead. Oh, you I play, play too? Yeah, no, no, right. what, you, I'm going to serenade you with yes. a mouth on? Yes. Come on. <laughs> this has never been open. This is brand new. No, it's brand new. It's for you, yeah. It's to protect you from infestations of bed bugs. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Okay. If you're going to be in the L.A. area and would like to attend a taping of The Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson, please call 323-570-0059.
<laughs> we didn't really kill a rat. <laughs> We didn't, and, and so don't write us any letters. We didn't kill a rat. We love all creatures. <laughs> and we would never give a cat a gun. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night.